Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. The US has employed a variety of tactics to contain China's chip industry, from banning ASML from selling EUV lithography machines to restricting exports of advanced immersion DUV lithography machines, and even enlisting semiconductor equipment manufacturers in Japan and the Netherlands to impose a comprehensive blockade. However, foreign media recently claimed that China has actually been preparing for lithography machines for 10 years. The foreign media stated that in recent years, China has been making large-scale purchases of ASML lithography machines. In 2023 alone, China imported over 60 billion yuan worth of lithography machines from ASML, and its large stockpile of immersion DUV lithography machines is sufficient to support chip manufacturing needs for the next decade. These machines can not only produce 7 nanometers chips, but also have the potential to break through to 5 nanometers and even 3 nanometers processes. Technically speaking, the production of 7 nanometers chips using immersion DUV lithography machines has been verified by TSMC. Its first generation 7 nanometers process relied on this equipment, only switching to EUV in its second generation. Lin Benjian, the father of immersion lithography, further pointed out that theoretically, this type of equipment can achieve 3 nanometers process technology through multiple exposure techniques. Of course, multiple exposures will reduce yield and increase costs, but when EUV is unavailable, solving the availability problem is more urgent than worrying about cost. Technically speaking, immersion DUV lithography machines can definitely manufacture 7 nanometers chips this has already been proven. TSMC's first-generation 7 nanometers chips were manufactured using immersion DUV lithography, only switching to EUV in the second generation. Immersion DUV lithography machines can also manufacture 5 nanometers chips without much problem. Lin Benjian even stated that it can be used to manufacture 3 nanometers chips, but it requires multiple exposures, reducing manufacturing efficiency. Furthermore, the alignment between multiple exposures will inevitably become less precise, thus reducing yield and increasing costs. However, what if you don't have EUV, but still want to manufacture 5 nanometers? or 3 nanometers chips. Then, of course, you won't consider cost too much, you'll just need to manufacture the chips first. Therefore, it's clear that the foreign media analysis is accurate. Even for the next 5 years, let alone the next 10, there's little need to worry about lithography machines, especially immersion DUV lithography machines. The production capacity of a single machine is already very high, and after years of continuous purchases, there are certainly no problems. China has already prepared for the future by stockpiling. Foreign media analysis suggests that China's concentrated procurement of immersion DUV lithography machines in recent years has created a scale advantage. The production capacity of a single machine is already highly efficient, and combined with the massive base formed by years of continuous procurement, the supply of lithography machines is not a concern in the short term. More importantly, these machines provide ample buffer space for the next 5 to 10 years. As for 5 years from now, the pace of technological development far exceeds expectations. China's independently developed immersion lithography machines and EUV equipment may have already achieved breakthroughs, at which point the dependence on external equipment 
will be significantly reduced. As the foreign media stated, the balance of power is currently tilted in China's favor. Every additional year provides greater assurance for China's independent research and development progress. This dual strategy of stockpiling plus R&D has given China a unique resilience in the chip manufacturing field. On the one hand, purchased equipment ensures current production capacity. On the other hand, independent R&D projects continue to advance, paving the way for future technological upgrades. This strategy not only hedges against the risks of external blockades, but also forces the domestic industrial chain to mature rapidly. It is noteworthy that China's procurement strategy for lithography machines is not simply stockpiling. According to ASML's financial reports, China has long been its largest source of revenue, and this continuous procurement reflects the strength of market demand. The U.S. blockade measures have actually spurred China's determination to plan ahead, creating a reverse effect of the more blockade, the greater the breakthrough. Currently, China's chip industry faces not only equipment blockades, but also a containment network such as the Quad Chip Alliance built by the U.S. and its allies. However, China has proven with concrete actions that by stockpiling key equipment in advance and continuously investing in independent R&D, it is entirely possible to find breakthroughs amidst the blockade. This pragmatic strategy is more sustainable than simply relying on external supplies or fantasizing about technological mutations. Looking at it from a 10-year perspective, the breakthroughs in China's chip industry are not merely about equipment reserves, but also about building the entire industrial chain ecosystem. From materials and design to manufacturing and packaging, every step is undergoing an iterative evolution from usable to advanced. While the U.S. is still grappling with how to further tighten its sanctions, China has quietly completed a crucial leap from catching up to parallel development. This silent technological contest ultimately tests not only equipment specifications, but also the resilience and regenerative capabilities of the entire system. And China is writing its own answer in the most straightforward way, stockpiling, researching and iterating.